With the prices of everything going up in the world, we have to be able to save money where we can. In this video, I'm going to review the difference between a $200 soundbar and a $30 soundbar. Let's get into it. Boosh! What's up guys, it's Ben back again with another video. Today we're going to be comparing two different soundbars of different price brackets to see if you really need to spend the money or if a $30 soundbar will be good enough. But before we get into it, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ben. I make videos and vlogs about photography and tech. If that's something that you're interested in, hit that subscribe button and consider joining the family. We're almost to a thousand subscribers. Let's see how long it's gonna take. Amazon Prime Day just happened about a week or two ago and I decided I was going to participate in Amazon Prime Day for the first time in a very long time. While scoping through the deals on Amazon, I discovered a $200 soundbar, the Samsung HWC450, and a $30 soundbar made by a company called Lark Sound. Here's the deal. I've been in the market for a soundbar for a while now, looking at the Vizios and the Sonys and the Sonos, and I could not make up my mind, mostly because they were all really expensive. And I know that there are different price ranges for soundbars, but I figured that because my TV is a Samsung, TV, maybe I should probably stick with Samsung. You know, brand consistency and all. And I also wanted to get my girlfriend a soundbar because you can barely hear her TV. Also, to preface, I am the only one who's complaining about the sound coming out of the TV. So it was like getting myself a soundbar so that I could hear her TV when I come over. Anyway, I saw this as a good opportunity to compare an expensive soundbar versus an inexpensive soundbar. And that is exactly what I decided to do. And because it was Amazon Prime Day, I was able to get some really good shipping and it came in in about two days. I immediately set up the Samsung one at my house and in the following day, I set up the $30 soundbar at my girlfriend's house. We've had these soundbars for about three weeks now, operating and checking out the sound consistencies, inconsistencies, and I feel that I am ready to give you guys my full opinion. And I'm gonna start this off by saying when I purchased these soundbars, I messed up on one of them with a simple yet irritating $200 misread of the product description. But I'm not going to count the issue against the product since they have a product that has the features that I originally wanted anyway. With that said, let's get into it. The setup of both of these soundbars was really simple and really quick with the setups not taking more than 10 minutes on each one. The $30 soundbar plugs into the wall and comes with a really cheap feeling plastic remote and no batteries. But if you set up the soundbar right, you won't have to touch the cheaper mode. The other thing that the $30 soundbar didn't come with was an HDMI cord. This is important because if you are wanting to have the soundbar connect to HDMI ARC, you are going to need an HDMI cord. If you don't know what HDMI ARC is, here is a very simple explanation. HDMI ARC is an option on a TV where you can plug in a peripheral like a soundbar or an Apple TV and control both the TV and the peripheral with the same remote. In this case, I wanted to control control the volume of the soundbar with the same TV remote. It's a good thing that I'm a nerd and we have plenty HDMI cords laying around the house. The other option that you have is to connect an optical cable to the TV and to the soundbar. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't think that TVs and soundbars still came with optical cables, but it came in handy for the $200 soundbar. And this is where that misread of the product description comes into play. When I was searching on Amazon to find a soundbar, I typed in soundbar with HDMI. HDMI arc. And for some reason, the $200 soundbar popped up as an option and I figured that it would be okay. But when it came in and I unboxed it to set it up, I found that there was no HDMI hookup. After getting irritated at myself for not getting the right thing, I found that the Apple TV has a feature where you can connect your remote to the soundbar and it uses the IR blaster that's inside of the remote. This is done by going into the settings and going into learn remote. After that, you are going to add the remote and press the volume up, volume down and mute. And after that, it'll work. Learning that made me not have to return it and I got to keep going. The Samsung soundbar comes with a wireless subwoofer that you can plug in directly into the wall 
and it will automatically connect to the sound bar, no pairing necessary, and it's very quick and very easy. I'll have a link to both the Samsung sound bar with HDMI arc, as well as the one that I have, and the $30 sound bar in the description down below. If you use my link, a small percentage comes back to the channel to support me making more of these videos and I greatly appreciate it. As for the final setup on the Samsung soundbar, I did go a little bit further with my setup because I wanted it to look a little bit more clean. I found this soundbar mounting bracket that mounts to the back of the TV mount where your TV is mounted to the wall and brings two arms down so that you can house your soundbar just below the TV. If you have a TV like mine that swivels and doesn't have an entertainment center below it for it to sit on. I'll also have that mounting bracket linked in the description down below. Onto some of the main features that we have on these soundbars. Both of these soundbars can be used as Bluetooth speakers that can be connected to your phone. Quick and easy just going into your Bluetooth settings and pairing to the speaker. The $30 soundbar does have a light in the front of it that indicates which input mode you are in. The light does stay on for a little bit and does go away after a little while, but every time you adjust the volume, the light will turn back on and then turn off again. As stated previously, the $30 soundbar does not come with a subwoofer, unlike the $200 soundbar that comes with a wireless subwoofer that you can plug in away from the actual soundbar that is hardwired to the TV. The Samsung soundbar also has a display in the front that tells you what input you're currently in, as well as the volume of the soundbar as you're moving the volume up and down. Each of these soundbars also has a button so that you can control the soundbar without using the remote. And the buttons on the Samsung soundbar are located at the very top, and the buttons on the $30 soundbar are located on the right-hand side. Now, there is going to be a size advantage when it comes to the $30 soundbar because it does come in almost 16 inches long. Whereas the Samsung soundbar comes in at 33 inches long and you need to find space for that subwoofer. Moving on to the ease of use, I think that both of these soundbars are quite easy to use. Weirdly enough, the $30 soundbar is obviously more easy to use than the $200 soundbar because of the HDMI arc. But like I said, like I said, I'm not going to bring that up even though I just did. Now, moving on to the part that I think everybody is wanting to know about, and that is sound quality. I ran the same tests of both these sound bars using a video that I found on YouTube that tests out Dolby Atmos sound to see the depth of these sound bars. The video has both really low tones as well as really high tones with birds chirping and rumbles that you can tell there is a big difference. <laughs> link that video down below as well. Also, bringing up the fact that one of them comes with an actual subwoofer is obviously going to have a little bit of a difference, right? Well, you're right, sort of. Honestly, I'm gonna be completely transparent with you guys. Yes, there is a big difference in sound quality when it comes to the bass and sometimes in the higher ends, especially because the Samsung soundbar comes with that subwoofer. There's going to be more of a heavier bass tone that is controllable in the settings of the Samsung soundbar. The Samsung soundbar has a lot more of those lower tones as well as a lot more clear dictation when it comes to dialogue. The $30 soundbar is clear when it comes to dialogue, but when the music comes in, it does sort of lack. But for a $30 soundbar, I'd be totally okay with losing a little bit of bass. And real quick, a side note, with my girlfriend's TV, when we plugged in the soundbar and you turn up and down the volume, the volume goes up by three points, then three points, then four points, then three points. So I don't know if that's just with her TV or if that's like a theme. I don't really notice too big of a difference between it, but just wanted to let you guys know, give you a heads up. Moving into my final thoughts, guys, the economy right now is quite trash and we have to be able to save money where we can. If you're able to afford a $200 sound bar without breaking the bank, I would say go for it, man. Do what you can do to get that nice crisp sound. But if money currently is not your strong suit, the $30 sound 
lumbar and even the one that's just above it can be a great choice for a current option to help you out with your current situation of needing to be able to hear your TV. If you're not an audiophile and you don't really have an ear for audio specific tones, I think the $30 soundbar is a great fit and is really good on the wallet, easy setup, quick and easy to use, and you can hear what's on your TV. If you guys have any further questions about these soundbars, please throw a comment down below in the comment section below. If you guys like this video, give it a like. If you really like this video, hit that subscribe button and consider joining the family. Like I said, we are almost at a thousand subscribers. I believe the last time I checked, we are 105 away. As always, the merch link is in the description down below. The discount code BOOSH10 for 10% off at checkout. Don't forget to follow my Instagram for my Amazon deals every day. Also, I've been going live on TikTok every once in a while. I'll link that in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay classy. Bye. Welcome to the end of the video, guys. Real quick. This is the show and tell item for the day. This is the A Canon PowerShot A2300 HD. This is actually the camera that I filmed a lot of the early videos on this YouTube channel with um, because most of the videos were, were vlogs. And uh, I'm really happy that I can keep this as a reminder of, of uh, where I came from. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.